viewing audience. Um, I want to jump into this trial. Uh, this is where Judge Doro basically gets everything on the record because Brooks was just thrown out of court into the adjacent courtroom and the judge has to make the record clear as to why he was removed. So let's jump into this real quick. Here we go. Number one, control by judge. The judge shall exercise reasonable control over the mode and order of interrogating witnesses and presenting evidence so as to do all of the following. Make the interrogation and presentation effective for the ascertainment of truth. Avoid needless consumption of time. Protect witnesses from harassment or undue embarrassment. Well, that's what he was doing. He was talking needlessly and wasting a lot of time. The next section, a witness may be cross-examined on any manner relevant to any issue in the case, including credibility. In the interest of justice, the judge may limit cross-examination with respect to matters not testified to on direct examination. The next section, leading questions. Leading questions should not be used on the direct examination of a witness, except as may be necessary to develop the witness's testimony. Ordinarily, leading questions should be permitted on cross-examination. Only on cross. And then the next part talks about civil. Now y'all hear that? She said it should be on cross. Exactly. So why was he objecting when the state was on cross asking leading questions? That lets you know he's not an attorney. He has no idea what he's doing. He's a complete idiot. And I really think, you know, that our justice system should re can, should reconsider people um, uh, trying to defend themselves that don't know the law. He doesn't know. And that's why there was too much time consumption because he didn't know what he, what he was doing. I think, you know, uh, the, the, in the Constitution, everybody shouldn't be able to represent himself. And if you ain't no attorney, you shouldn't be representing yourself anyway. The hell? Cases uh, would not be applicable in a criminal case. So that is a statute that guides what I do, not just in this case, but in every case that comes before me for trial or even a motion hearing. And in my almost 11 years on the bench, I've presided over dozens and dozens of cases. Y'all hear that? 11, almost 11 years on the bench. Let me ask you a question. How many years does Daryl have, has as an experienced attorney? <laughs> All right. Zero given 11 years on the bench. You do the math. You do the math. Come on, man. How dare him have the audacity to challenge her? Cases that have gone to trial. To say that this has been the most challenging of my career would be an understatement. An understatement. We all know. I have done my best, I believe, to be fair, to be unbiased, Too fair. to protect the rights of not only Mr. Brooks as it relates to this trial, but those of witnesses. Judge Doro was so fair that she was making people mad because <laughs> they felt that she was letting him get get away with a lot of stuff, giving him the autonomy. You know, all she was doing was giving him the rope that he basically put around his own neck, so to speak. Mm, come on, come on with it. Come on with it. Those of the victims. I remember he said course, that. Come on. Last but not least, the jurors. Prior to the court taking an early lunch this morning, a couple of things happened that I think worth are worth making a further record about. Going to the beginning of this morning, where it is true. I did not do my usual practice of asking if there were any preliminary issues that the parties wanted to address. Um, in my mind, I wanted to get to the witnesses. Um, we are at that stage. I knew there were a number of witnesses to be called, and I wanted to ensure that it was done effectively. But that's not um, for with all of the reasons that are stated in 906.11. But that's not what Daryl Brooks wanted. He wanted to delay. He wasn't trying to. Y'all remember, he was even trying to. Now, this was in the the early stages, this, before they even 
um, did the random lot of uh, securing a jury. A jury. You know, he was trying to stop that. He didn't want them to go forward with that. So I understand what she's trying to move this effectively, but that's the opposite of what he was trying to do, obviously. Obviously. And I thought it was reasonable at the time to simply take up issues dealing with legal matters at a break. That's why I brought the jury in. During the jury coming in, um, Mr. Brooks continued to talk, make statements. The record speaks for itself. I'm not gonna, I, frankly, I couldn't tell you everything that was said at that time. Because he was saying so much and that worked against Brooks because he did it in front of the jury. So right there, I really believe the jury already had their minds made up probably even before this point. It was already over. They were just trying to get through. Everybody was trying to get through this process to get it finally over with. To put this man away. I think it's important to note, though, it's the tone, the demeanor, the decorum, or frankly, the lack thereof for many days on end throughout this trial. It has become apparent that when the jury comes into this courtroom when he makes and leaves this courtroom that Mr. Brooks makes disparaging remarks about the integrity of this court, of these proceedings, and of other parties in the courtroom. He repeatedly references things such as subject matter jurisdiction, Stupid to keep which there is a written decision that I have filed in this case. It is very clear this court has subject matter jurisdiction. Obviously, obviously, she, but that just lets you know he knows that. He knows that. That is just an attempt. That is just an attempt to further delay. Come on. Come on. Just like he denied that that was him in the video when it was showed to him by Detective Carpenter in the interrogation room. In other words, he knew that was him. He knew that, but that's not what he wanted to hear, so he tried to derail. Wow, isn't it, huh? There's no overlap with that. Derail, his name is Derail, and his whole purpose was to derail what was going on in that courtroom, but I don't think so. <laughs> this case, this is not a civil case. This is not a case in federal court, for right. example, where subject matter jurisdiction sometimes becomes an issue for things like whether there's a federal question that's involved. This is different. Every now and again in a criminal case, subject matter jurisdiction is a type of issue that comes up, but not under the circumstances right. here. Right, this is completely different. I'm not going to rehash everything that's in my decision. I stand by that decision. The record has been made abundantly clear that Mr. Brooks does not believe this court has jurisdiction. You know, it doesn't matter what he believes. You know, that's just like he felt uh, there couldn't be a jury view unless he gives his consent. Excuse me. We don't need your consent. You don't control anything in this courtroom. Not at all. And this is why I like when Attorney Opera said that this is when they had already uh, the verdicts were already in. And so she had the autonomy to say it because the jury was gone. They already made their decision. Thank you, by the way, to the jurors. But Attorney Opera said she said as he sits here is <laughs> shackled. He is in control of nothing. But in theory, he was never in control of nothing anyway. We didn't need his consent. We don't care what he believes, irrespective of what he believes. He is being held responsible for what he did. How about that? His, re his objections have been noted, well documented by the record that's being taken down. I know from my experience, not only as a judge, but as a litigator, that once that objection is made, it's preserved. Exactly. I even stated at one point, I think there's a standing objection. I will note that for the record. Um, Mr. Brooks continues, in my opinion, to bring this issue up in front of the jury to distract, wow. to delay, 
and to call into question the integrity of these proceedings. Frankly, maybe to create an issue on appeal. Exactly. If he is convicted. But this is why I like she's getting this on the record to stop the likelihood of an appeal. Because they're going to look at this and be like, oh, he must be crazy. <laughs> In other words, you wasted your time trying to file an appeal. They're going to send him right back to his cage where the sewer rat belongs. I brought him, I should state it this way, he is not in this courtroom presently because on day 15 of this trial, and specifically this morning, right, we have a history of disruptions, Absolutely. delay, interruptions, disrespectful behavior, the common courtesy, I think that just as a human being, we all would expect have not been followed. But here's the thing. Can I say something about that? Here's the thing. You can't expect Daryl um, to go along with this because it's them against him. Them against him. He knows he's going to jail. And so he's not going to agree to the quorum. He's not because if you notice, even when the trial began, I think Judge Doro, it, she hadn't even said uh, maybe. A, a full sentence before he interrupted her and then he was sparring with her this was like on the first day of trial he immediately <laughs> you know and so can you and this is this right here is day 15 that's two weeks that they had to put up with this animal can you imagine and there was another th almost three weeks can you imagine how tough and difficult it was to get through these weeks with Dow Brooks. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. And the look, the look of relief on the faces of the prosecutors, you know, the look of relief on, you know, on Judge Duro. I mean, it this was a struggle. It wasn't a struggle in terms of the prosecution having enough evidence to convict him, but it was a struggle getting through the process of conviction, getting through the process of sentencing because he was trying to delay sentencing. I mean, this was he was going all around. He had, he had a toothache. He had a paper cut. He was uh, uh, claimed that he had COVID. It was just back and forth. I mean, you name it. Somebody wrote a Reddit post. He wanted to get rid of the and then had a nerve. Y'all remember when he said, uh, D D Your Honor, don't, don't, don't you think it's probably smart uh, to not have the juror? And, 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 why would he use such a word smart? Was it smart to drive a vehicle in a parade with the windows down? Was that smart? Was that smart? How could you use such a word? Oh, I wanted to come through that TV screen. Woo. Mmm. My, my, my. All right. All right. I'm getting upset. Let me calm down. <laughs> Let me calm down. I don't want my blood pressure hey, going through the rafters. Lord have mercy. I have, it's evidently made. Let me restate that. It's. It is evident to this court that when there is a ruling that Mr. Brooks disagrees with, uh, whether it be an evidentiary ruling, anything, um, whether it be on subject matter jurisdiction, whatever it may be, it's anything that he has a pattern now of directly confronting the court, asking for is that verified law? Can you <laughs> prove that? Is that an actual law? He starts debating the topic right. once again, Let or he will even try to further turn us away from that right. by bringing up another topic. For example, just today, when the issue came up about this letter that he claims was sent to him by Erica Patterson. Right, right. The letter, the letter that didn't have a signature. Who signs letters? <laughs> Now, you think he could really get an appeal on this? Don't you think 
the, the, the appellate court have enough sense that in order to receive a letter, there has to be a signature. How come he didn't bring the letter to court? <laughs> this man is a fool. <laughs> and I asked repeatedly for an offer of proof rather than answer the question directly. Mr. Brooks instead started talking about an exhibit the state offered into evidence what? yesterday. And, and from my perspective, it's he doesn't address the merits of the issues that are before right. this. Court he goes away from it and then tries to divert things down a different path, whether that's to delay to disrupt all of the above or just simply be discourteous i think all of those words would yeah. be an accurate description of what is happening yeah there <laughs> this that is was one piece of or one objection or series of objections uh that i actually went off the record uh not off put the that record. bible I mean, down this, put that bible down you you a usurper you are black. You're blasphemous. Put that Bible down. The devil is a liar. It's the jury in order to try. The book ain't going to help you. To get an offer of proof. Look at Satan reading the Bible. Y'all see the devil holding up a Bible. <laughs> you're going to hell where you belong. You and your imps. And your imp is your mother. Ooh. Uh, from Mr. Brooks. And as that exchange went on it got from my perspective he got louder he got more disrespectful i think it's fair to say his behavior was volatile and it's because of that that i called an early lunch and it's because of all of those things even when i attempt to give the warning that he will be removed upon further behavior he immediately interrupts and says are you holding me in contempt right a very clear indication to this court that he is attempting and trying and actually disrupting the proceedings so that I can't make an accurate record. Right. And do y'all remember the time when she, he was removed and put in the other courtroom and then he lied and said that that he felt he felt for his life because one of the bailiffs had made gestures behind. Man, that was all lies. Those were tactics tactics <laughs> tactics that the court of appeals are laughing at laughing at so none of this helps you daryl brooks all he did was play russian roulette with the law that's a very dangerous game especially or particularly when it comes back to bite you in his gluteus minimus <sighs> Like I said, it's challenging. That is why he is in the other courtroom muted so that I can make the record. And I will confirm with my clerk and the bailiffs. I should have done this at the beginning, but I, I believe. Do, I do. I thank you. My clerk did confirm that they can see, they can hear, we can Absolutely. see um, as well. And he can, he can definitely hear. Y'all remember he arrogantly, get, arrogantly said, I got one ear and can hear this. And, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I'm glad that they have. Other people in that room to confirm that that system is on just in case he tries to create an issue on appeal, which is inevitably not going to work. It is this court's opinion that Mr. Brooks is blatantly pushing the limits openly. Of what Absolutely. I have tried to establish in terms of when to call witnesses, how to call witnesses. He pushes the limits on asking questions that are not probative that are not relevant or that directly contravene a prior ruling by this court related to other acts evidence right that ruling that i made was to the benefit of daryl brooks not the state daryl brooks the defendant well even when she excused the jurors that quote unquote was to the benefit of Daryl Brooks because he was screwing himself in front of the jury. <laughs> you know, it was to his benefit in theory. She tried to protect him. They, she was trying. Yeah, yeah. But, you know, he he 
was the nail uh, and his own that he hammered into his own coffin. There have been multiple witnesses who have themselves stopped, basically looked at me and can I answer that question, basically? Is there nonverbal communication to me? Or some have actually said, I don't think I can answer that. There have been other witnesses where I've stopped them from answering so as not to bring in the other acts evidence. The most recent of which occurred this morning with Erica Patterson and the repeated questions to her related to either information she did or didn't give the detective when the detective spoke to her on two separate occasions. There's been other questions throughout the trial to, I believe to Detective Guth directly and other witnesses who had information uh, about why that may have been the case. But this witness um, I think has been very, very careful to not run afoul of the court's prior ruling. ruling. That leads to the evidence claimed by Mr. Brooks that he has related to a letter and photographs. As I indicated before the break, I've looked at both 906.16 and 906.08. Um, uh, those are generally two of the statutes uh, dealing with character evidence. That would be 906.08, 906.16 deals with bias. From my perspective, the questions that were actually asked and answered about, uh, do we have a child together? Well, he didn't ask it quite that way. I'm summarizing, but regarding their common child, uh, regarding uh, whether he sees the child on or off, where they met, things of that nature, are solely to attack her, credi her character sorry, as a mother, which is wholly improper. Yeah, that was terrible. The only character evidence that would remotely be allowed under. But uh, you know what? That was absolutely horrific. Why would he attack her character as a mother? What kind of a father is he? He's a child molester. He has a whole history of crimes. Ain't no way in the world. He He's hypocritical. And he's on the registry. I mean, what gives him the right? To say anything. He can't say nothing. That's why when Zach brought up his history. Oh he went off. He went off. He went off because he didn't know that Zach was going to say that. He didn't know that. Did y'all did see. That's why he's removed in the other courtroom now. On day 15. Because he was talking all that smack about Erica. And didn't know. Zach Wichaw. Was waiting in the wings. With a big old two by four and bust him over the head with it. At least for a witness under <laughs> these circumstances would be character for truthfulness, which would not even be from this witness. It's typically another witness comes in and testifies to that and only about opinion evidence, their opinion of the person's character for truthfulness. Under bias 90616, uh, I didn't see where it also related to. Um, her credibility. It says, for the purpose of attacking the credibility of a witness, evidence of bias, prejudice, or interest of the witness for or against any party to the case is admissible. Again, simply attacking her on her motherhood. That's my perspective. I did not receive the answer to the repeated questions I asked regarding the offer of proof um, and this letter that he claims was sent by Erica Patterson and then the photos. The issue as it relates to this witness is a single charge in the case. It is a battery charge with a date of violation that is alleged to be November 21 of 2021. To allow Mr. Brooks to ask the witness about contact after that point in time is not relevant. He has not given me any reason as to why it's relevant. The state also, I think, rightly points out that if those questions were to be answered 
by Erica Patterson and other questions along those lines that were questions that were objected to by the state and that I sustained, Mr. Brooks would open the door to what only could be described as very damaging evidence against him related to very damaging. the other acts evidence related to whether he has a relationship with the children or not. And frankly, a topic I am not going to open the door to. I'm not going to allow. It's a side issue. It is not relevant. It is not probative. Not at all. Not probative. But certainly one could argue based upon the questions topics that the door could be opened to. By the way, I like how he's muted, isn't it? Oh, he's he can't say nothing. That's why he's mad. He hates that he's muted. Because you know if he had been in that courtroom and she was saying that, she wouldn't have been able to say any of that. Because he would interrupt just constantly. That I mean, you know, that's the purpose. And that's why I'm glad that she's getting this on the record. So that way, look, Court of Appeals, you know, I'm looking for a consensus. I'm showing you what he's doing. I'm showing you that I'm, we're, I'm trying to protect his rights, you know, but... He's screwing himself. He's screwing himself. And that's on him. It is my duty as the judge assigned to this case to ensure that the trial is fair, that relevant and probative evidence comes in, and that it is done so in a way that's effective and efficient for the presentation of evidence, including the testimony of witnesses. And so I am not going to allow questions related to the children in common or child in common, at least any further between Mr. Brooks and Ms. Patterson. Because it ain't relevant. When they met, how they met. Right. The nature of their relationship now, whether there's been any contact between them since he was arrested and going forward. Because nothing that I've been presented with would suggest it relates not only to relevant and probative information, but even to her credibility as a witness. I will give Mr. Brooks a final opportunity to make an offer of proof as to why he believes my decision is wrong. <coughs> that needs to include uh, why he, an offer of proof. Well, that's why he always tries to challenge her on everything anything she says according to him is wrong you know he he's a full-time criminal but he wants to challenge a full-time trial judge that was a lawyer and a da <laughs> like come on <laughs> as to why he believes this letter is from erica patterson and why it's relevant to the issues in this case. <laughs> what is he doing? Because he came in to the courtroom this afternoon and is not in here, but in an adjacent courtroom, I want to make some additional findings as well and kind of just tie up a few loose ends for the record. As the court, the Supreme Court in Illinois versus Allen stated, it is essential to the proper administration of criminal justice that dignity, order, and decorum be the hallmarks of all court proceedings in our country. The flagrant disregard in the courtroom of elementary standards of proper conduct should not and cannot be tolerated. Trial judges confronted with disruptive, contemptuous, stubbornly defiant defendants must be given sufficient discretion to meet the circumstances of each case. No one formula for maintaining the appropriate courtroom atmosphere will be best in all situations. This court has utilized an adjacent courtroom with superior audio and video capabilities 
that I believe are the functional equivalent of being present in this courtroom. Mr. Brooks's behavior today alone was disruptive. I would absolutely characterize it as stubbornly defiant. It was interruptive and it certainly aggravates the proper administration of the criminal justice system of this trial. There was nothing dignified about it. There was nothing orderly about it. I would remind him once again of the, of SCR chapter 62. And that's, and see, she's going back into citing case law. Mr. Brooks is not interested in anything, all right, that is going against what he's saying. You know, I understand, um, now I can understand her quoting case law so that way the Court of Appeals could know what she's doing in light of her rulings and her decisions. But as far as him going along with that, you can forget it. And that's exactly why. Now, again, if he had been in that courtroom, they would have been going back and forth, him debating her over this. He's not going to agree to anything. He would, Like I told you before, he wouldn't even agree that that was him that was behind the wheel. When asked about this in interrogation, he lied throughout the course of all of that. So, listen, excuse my language. Judge Doral, I'm sorry. You cannot make chicken salad out of chicken shit. You are not going to be able to make chicken salad out of chicken shit. Mr. Brooks is chicken shit. You ain't going to get no chicken salad out of that. You're going to get a sewer rat. <laughs> Which are the basic. That's what you're going to get. Expectations, of courtesy and decorum in the courts in the state of Wisconsin. I'd remind him of the golden rule. Do unto others as you would have them do unto you. He don't care about that. Be respectful. He's not. Be kind. Give these proceedings. Negative. The due respect that they deserve. That's negative. For himself. He's not doing that. I do not believe he even shows respect for that. He does that. I'm not looking for any further input on the issue of removal or any further record. I wanted to make that record without interruption, which is why Mr. Brooks is in the other courtroom. Was in the other courtroom. Exactly. <laughs> when we come back to this courtroom, I will ask Mr. Brooks for an offer of proof. He will be brought in. You don't have no proof. Um, so we'll go off the record for that momentarily. Um, an offer of proof, if he wishes to do that, related to the letter. Uh, the letter. Oh, BS. Questioning. There's no. There's no. I also want an offer of proof as to what probative and relevant information he doesn't have it. Miss Patterson will be testifying to based on his direct examination. This is a witness who was called by the state initially. This is a witness where Mr. Brooks had a full and fair opportunity to, to cross-examine her on a prior date. He was allowed to call her himself. The vast majority of the testimony today has been a rehashing and a representation of her testimony from the other day. From, I'd have to look at my notes. But the thing is, the things that he was asking her wasn't even relevant. relevant. So I like how she denied uh, him calling her again because it didn't make any sense. I think he was just wanting to call. You got to realize he hadn't seen her in over a year because it was a year when the trial had took place. So I think he was just doing that for the purpose of just bothering her. If you notice, he kept asking her repeated questions, the same thing, the same thing, until the judge had to cut it off because it was going nowhere. It was absolutely circular. It was absolutely meritless, frivolous, stupid, didn't make any sense, uh, waste of time, etc., etc. And I'm glad she did not give him another opportunity to be able to do that. Because that was just sick. And I applaud. And I said this in one of the previous videos. I applaud Erica Patterson for having the courage to be able to look this animal in the face. Not only Erica Patterson, but a number of these witnesses. 
you know, they some of them were were timid. And I get it. I get it. Can you imagine being questioned by this evil, imbecilic, nasty, uh, 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 volatile, this criminal, this demonic force? Having to be questioned by him. And then even the witnesses that saw him run over people. Some of these witnesses had were subpoenaed to be in court to testify and to be questioned by this animal. Look at the dancing grannies. He killed, you know, people who she worked with, people who she knew, and she was questioned by him. I mean, this was utterly sick. Utterly sick. Let's dive back in. For the date. October what? October 7th, I believe she was the third witness. She was the third. We did not <coughs> glean anything new, probative, or relevant through the course of the questioning today. Right. Because he's had a full and fair opportunity to already cross-examine her, because he's had a significant amount of time this morning to question her, I will require that offer of proof, and then I will make a decision whether any more questions will be asked of the witness. At this point in time, does the state anticipate any cross of Ms. Patterson? That's the, but I'm going to ask that when we come back, when everyone is here. With that, I am going to take a very short recess to have Mr. Brooks brought back into this courtroom uh -oh, yeah. so that we can continue with testimony and evidence. He's not, Thank you. He's not going to want to do that. What do you think about that, audience? He's not wanting to. He's not going to comply to anything. I mean, you can forget deference. You can forget decorum. He's not. He's not going to align himself to that. It's them versus him. His job is to create chaos. <laughs> That's his whole gambit, to create chaos and to try to, f to get this judge to go off, to help him on the appeal. Let's go back. Wait a minute. I think, okay, so we're, let's come back on the record here. And I just want to see this exchange here very quickly. Oh, man, can you imagine having to deal three weeks in a row? The pressure, the uh, man, I, I know after this trial, Judge Doral probably took off a couple weeks of just a vacation just to get away to try to detox from all of this. And I'm pretty sure there was there were others that just needed a detox because wait a minute, is this playing? Let me pull in here. Uh, OK. He's pretending to read the Bible, it, it, it appears. Let's see here. And the only reason why I say pretending because nobody ever saw the page move. <laughs> I like when Judge Duro got that on the record. She said he's up reading a book, although I never seen a page move. <laughs> Turn Here we go. The audio is on. Would you like to come back to this courtroom, sir? Uh, you're unmuted. So, so I'm finally unmuted. Yeah. You've been unmuted for a while since I came back on. My understanding, sir, is you'd like to be in that other courtroom. Is that true? They should keep him over there and shut his mouth. It's refreshing that he was muted. Shut up. Shut your mouth. Can't stand when he's speaking. He's putting on the headphones. What's going on? Mr. Brooks? <laughs> I'm inviting you yeah. back yeah. to the courtroom. My understanding from a relay of information from the bailiffs is that you don't want to come back here. I ain't saying that. Right. Are you ready to come back then? Not if I'm just going to get held in contempt again. Well, shut your mouth and don't say nothing then. Then why am I even over here? Because of your so mouth. I can make a ruling and make a record without an interruption pursuant to my authority in Illinois versus Allen. 
These are so stupid. Did you, your, did you make your record? Did you make I did. Am I ever going to get a chance to make the record without being interrupted? See, see how, see how, and here's a prime example. You see how he goes, he can't answer a direct question. So what he does, he goes off on something else to create another issue. And now bringing it to a whole, now we're going down a tangent. Now we're down something else. He can't answer directly. And I'm glad that the judge pointed that out because she did mention that when she addressed uh, the, the, the record. So that way the Court of Appeals can see what's going on. It's a pattern. That's what he does. He knows he's not being held in, con in contempt, but yet he keeps asking the same question without answering directly. Then he says something stupid. You know, why is he even there? As if he wasn't interrupting. So you think Judge Doro just put him in the other courtroom for no reason? I mean, what is not, what is he not getting? What the hell is wrong with him? Stupid. I'm asking you, the first question is, do you want to come back into this courtroom? Not if you're going to hold me in contempt. Shut up. She told you, invariably, she's not holding you in contempt. If you were held in contempt, you'd be back at Dodge, dumbass. And she ain't doing that anyway because she's not going to further delay. It's already been a year. That's all contempt is. Put you in there 10, 30 days for what? When, when she's trying to bring finality to this. Stupid. Sir, I need I to continue to with the trial. So if you don't answer yes or no, then I, then I will... Presume you want to he be ain't gonna answer yes in that no. courtroom and you'll, by your conduct, waive your right to be in this courtroom. I, by what conduct? I didn't, I didn't consent to I don't, You know what? I, 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 ooh, I wish I could ooh, take my shoe off and just, ooh. Just, ooh. I wish I had like like a, a, a pot. Uh, uh, you know, the, the, the stuff, the pots that you put on the stove and just throw a pot at him. <laughs> I'm sorry for sounding violent, but he's got me to that point, y'all. <laughs> I feel like throwing pots and stuff at him, like a plate. <laughs> Wouldn't mind throwing a brick at him. Is that the jurors coming in? You notice that she stands showing deference to the jurors. Dow Brooks was sitting down. He might be sitting down now. Thank you, everyone. Please be seated. Look at it. He didn't even stand while he was in the other courtroom. So basically, the jurors know that he's in the Just other room. For the record, Mr. Brooks is appearing from another courtroom. That should not affect your deliberation. Well, it it should affect. They already know why he. They know he ain't over there for nothing, and they know how he was acting in front of them, irrespective of you trying to protect him. They knew what was going on. They ain't stupid. They know this man is a nut, and they already made up. Their, they already made their decisions. He's toast. In any way, at this time, does the state have any questions for this witness? I don't have any questions for Miss Patterson. All right. Thank you, ma'am. You may step down. Thank you for being here. Who was that on the stand? Oh, you know what? I wonder if that was Erica. Because I think she said that he could not. Actually, I don't I don't remember. I don't know who was on the stand. I don't know. But I thought that there was an exchange where he Daryl couldn't call Erica back. Unless the state did a cross and then that would require him to say anything. But if the state didn't have a cross, then Daryl could no longer question it. So I don't know if that was Erica on the stand. It might. I think so. It might have been. It might have been because Erica was the last person on that stand before he was removed to the other courtroom.
if I'm not mistaken. Y'all can correct me in the comments. Y'all know, listen, y'all watch this stuff day in and day out. So y'all know a little better than me. But uh, from my recollection, it might have been Erica. Because notice she allowed her to step down. He couldn't ask nothing. So here we go. All right, the defense may call its next witness, please. So let's fast forward this because all he wants to do is come back in the courtroom. Let's see. Oh, no, let's see the exchange. I think the exchange is, are you holding me in contempt? Same BS. Let me see. The other courtroom is the functional equivalent of him being present in this courtroom. Uh, Mr. Brooks, before I unmute you, I am going to advise you. I will ask you um, to call your next witness. And if I don't get a direct response out of you, I may ask it again. And if you fail to give me a direct response, then you will forfeit your right Forfeiture. to call any other witnesses. So I'm going to unmute you. You're at your own Actually, risk. I need to bring the jury back out. Uh, but before I do that, I will unmute you first and ask you which witness you intend to call so we can at least have that person ready to go and outside the courtroom. Um, who will be your next witness? I'm not calling no witness if I got to be in this other courtroom. Would you like to come back into this courtroom, sir? Well, you know what? I would have been like, okay. Okay. Because she had the legal right to have him there given as many times as he was thrown out of the courtroom. The Court of Appeals would definitely understood. How many times? Let me ask you a question. How many times was Daryl Brooks thrown out of court? All right. That's enough in and of itself for the appellate court to be like, well, I don't blame you for keeping them over there. And if he says that he doesn't want to call anybody from this courtroom, then guess what? That's forfeiture, because every time he comes in this courtroom, he causes chaos. That's his whole. That's his entire plan. Judge Dora already said it's a history. It's a history. This is day 15. So in other words, all this, this has been going on two weeks. This is two weeks worth of history. As soon as he would have said, I ain't calling nobody from this court. Well, guess what? That would have been automatic forfeiture because he would not have came back in my courtroom given his history. Of interruptions, disruptions. Debating the judge on rulings back and forth. I would not have allowed him to come back. Why was I ever removed? See, see. I've made now he asking a dumb question. Why was he removed? Oh, because you didn't disrupt. You didn't interrupt her when she was trying to make it. You didn't debate her on rulings. You were just an angel. You were removed because you were an angel in court. That's why. Let me fast forward this because this is BS and y'all know it. He knows it. The whole world knows it. That's why he would never get a fair trial anyway. You know why? Because the whole world knows what he did. Nobody care about no venue. It didn't matter where it was held. He was doomed by default. <laughs> Come on. All right, the jurors are coming back in. I'm surprised. Is he standing? Or is he sitting down? Like the fool he is. Oh, wow, he's standing. Too late for that. You didn't show your disrespect. You're going down. And you know you are. Inevitably going down. Thank you, everyone. Please be seated. Sit down. Stupid. The dumbest person I've ever seen in my life. The defense may call its next witness. Who's here? Bertram Hayes Aldrich and Liz Connell are present and ready, Your Honor. Thank you. What was the last two? Aldrich and Liz Connell, dummy, with your one ear. Come on. Don't know what the hell you doing. It's a waste of time. 
All he should have did was told the family that he was sorry and go back to your cell and serve your time. You're not going to win. This is a waste of time. This is a mockery. Let's go with uh, Deanna Aldridge. Deanna Aldridge? All right, very well. He ain't even go through those boxes. He'll take a box and bust him up over the head with it. He don't know no. He don't know nothing. You don't don't know what you're doing at all. Clearly. <laughs> Look at that face. <laughs> yeah, they laughing at you because you're stupid. You're just as dumb as they come. I'd be laughing, and if I was the, I would laugh right. I would smile right in his face. My favorite part of the trial was when them verdicts was handed in. My, my, my. That's when, that, that's when he knew it was over. Well, we all knew it was over. We were just waiting to try to get through the process with this idiot. And so we are waiting for Aldrich. I'm just reading some of the comments on the sign as I'm looking at the. I mean, some of these folks in the comments. I mean, they sorry, are just. Anna, somebody said those. It's all right. Thank you for letting us. Somebody said those nails. You mean those claws? <laughs> in the absence of hairlines. <laughs> bye bye bye. Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> All right, you know what? I don't even want to go further with this. Listen, y'all get the point. Y'all know this dude that knows nothing, does not know what he's doing, and I'm glad that there has been finality put put to this. Um, finality of us knowing that he will never have the opportunity to be able to hurt or kill anyone ever again, thanks to the grand jury um, that thought it not robbery to uh, permit. Uh, the in, the indictment by the state, thanks to the people, thanks to the jurors um, for giving uh, the judge the wherewithal uh, to be able to sentence this fool. And I like how she sentenced him irrespective of his stupid mother suggesting that uh, mental illness. And I think that is that is horrible for her to try to use a real issue that somebody else may really be experiencing but using that to try to shield what her son did that is nasty that is co-conspirator work that is evil and his mother needs to go down in flames along with him y'all leave your comments <laughs>